Hello, good morning. Uh, a lot less wind today. Yesterday it was very windy. Today it's a lot better. So a few years ago, I was talking to a friend and uh, he asked me why I decided to go to switch my diet to a purely plant based <clears throat> to a purely plant based diet. He wanted to know the reason that I'd gone vegan. And I, I told him at that stage, I told him that my main reason was health. But there was, it was also uh, for animal welfare reasons. And he said that he couldn't understand at all my point of view because after all, in nature, animals eat other animals. That it's a completely natural thing for carnivores and other big animals to, to eat, eat, eat each other. So why shouldn't we? Uh, I remember wondering, hmm, I, I'd not heard this argument before. And that evening I was thinking about, I remembered back to when I was a child and I remember watching uh, Robinson Crusoe on television and he was cast away on a desert island. And I remember as a child letting this scenario go through my mind and, and even as a child, I remember thinking that, you know, on a desert island, we, we, we wouldn't be very well equipped to catch a rabbit, uh, a wild pig, a bird, uh, a wild anything. Come, <laughs> thinking about it, I couldn't, I couldn't think of, of, a, of a way that I would be able to catch uh, and, and eat uh, a, an animal. So uh, even as a child, I... Um, I wondered whether we were really equipped to uh, to eat animals, physically speaking, of course. Uh, and if you think about it, our, our, um, our, our physical body is just not equipped for catching an animal. I mean, we're slow compared to most animals. Uh, and we don't have claws. We, we don't have the, the teeth to, to rip apart the meat. Um, you know... Our hands are perfect for peeling an orange. Have you noticed that? You can stick your thumb in the top of an orange and peel it really well using the hands, but pretty useless really at ripping an animal apart. <laughs> and the more I thought about what my friend had said, I started to think about, um, I mean, nobody, You. I mean, we, we humans, we, we just don't feel hungry at the sight of an animal. You know, we, we, when we see an animal, a wild animal, we don't, um, we don't, I don't think we see it as food. And if we are really true carnivores, in my example of the, the cow in the field, why don't we, when we see the cow in the field, the cattle in the field, this juicy cattle, we don't stop the car. We don't open the doors, jump over the fence, chase the cattle try and chase the cattle down to eat it for lunch this is just not something that ever ever happens and i think there's a reason for that uh, and that is that we are not actually carnivores a lot of people say well of course we're not carnivores we're omnivores but if you look at the the the, the, the teeth and the physical makeup of a, of a of a pure omnivore we're not like that either actually we're a, a lot more more like herbivores or frugivores and if you think about it we also there's i mean there has to be a reason that we shelter the the truth from our children i mean if we were true omnivores if we had no problem at all with eating animals and it was part of our nature why would we try to to shelter the truth from our our, our children i mean most parents don't willingly or uh, deliberately talk to their children about what goes on in a slaughterhouse <laughs> and a lot of parents hope their children never really ask where meat comes from in a in a deeper way so there's a reason for that whereas as a parent you'd have no problem at all explaining where an apple comes from or an orange but if we were true omnivores if we were really made by nature to eat meat surely we wouldn't have a problem explaining this to our children it's a good it's something to think about I think in, in comparison, when you see a, a ripe apple or a ripe tomato here in Tenerife, sometimes uh, you find little 
little tomatoes that are just growing naturally on the on the ground the conditions are right and they are absolutely delicious but when you see one or a, a bilberry or a blackberry or you have the urge to pick it and eat it this is um i think this is an urge that we all share so when we see ripe fruit we we are attracted to it we are we're attracted to picking it and eating it whereas when we see a wild animal we we don't feel hungry at all so what does this say about who we really are? This was what I started to ask myself, you know. I also found out yesterday that uh, fruit is the easiest of all foods for humans to eat. Nothing is more perfect for us. It goes straight through our digestion, digestive system, everything perfect. Whereas meat is one of the hardest things for us to digest. And uh, actually... Um, we have a very, very long, we have long intestines compared to the intestines of a true meat-eating animal or an omnivore. They have shorter intestines to get, to get rid of the, the meat quickly and also the acid in the, in the, in the stomach of a uh, carnivore is really strong whereas ours, the, the acid that we have in our stomachs is, is really quite weak and that's actually a reason why I found out uh, a reason why we often get food poisoning from from food uh, meat <laughs> if it's not being cooked properly because we don't have the acid in our stomach stomach to, to kill the bacteria whereas a, a lion has no problem uh, uh, with that whatsoever so but even but even if let's say for argument we are omnivores and that we are by nature meant to eat meat um we don't now in this modern world we don't need to eat meat and we are i think far more compassionate than we are omnivore <laughs> so the argument that other animals eat each other so why shouldn't we i mean what kind of what kind of logic is that basing to base our morality on the actions of wild animals i mean <laughs> Uh, uh, we, we wouldn't normally do that, you know, I mean, we don't normally base our morality on the actions of a wild animal, so why, why, should, we, why should we do that now? The most, the most natural thing for, for, for me uh, is absolutely fruit and berries, you know, and I, and I think this is our nature, I think that our nature is actually not to eat meat, I think it's to eat fruit, and berries and nuts and roots and so on and the only reason that we do eat meat is because we like the taste of it so we and I, and I think this is really true most people would say I could never go vegan because I like the taste too much so if we're only eating meat for the taste of it this means that we are uh, ignoring completely our, 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 our sense of compassion that we all have we're very strong strongly compassionate people this is why we can't watch the images from a slaughterhouse or images of animals being treated um, cruelly because we are compassionate so th the the honest truth is people eat meat because they like the taste and they ignore the compassionate side of their of their selves and um, this is why all the meat is packaged and, and presented in a way so we're not reminded uh, of the suffering that goes on. So to base, to as my, to coming back to my friend saying other animals eat each other so why shouldn't we? It's a poor on argument. Other animals rape and kill each other. You wouldn't say, well, other animals rape and kill each other so it's fine that I do that. It's obviously a nonsensical argument. Uh, and it's certainly nothing that we would want to base our morality on. So, uh, as an argument, I think it's. Um, I think we've been through the points now, and I think that uh, it's clear that we are actually herbivores, or probably even frugivores, and we need to find our way back to our true selves. Thank you. See you tomorrow.